All right, hello again, all three of my wonderful viewers. I say having had actually no viewers yet, but uh, you know, assuming by the time I upload this video, perhaps I will. Um, welcome back, uh, my first video. Um, I ended up going a little long talking about my list, so I figured I'd split this up uh, and talk about the rest of the field at the Goonhammer Open AOSGT in Baltimore this weekend. Um, in a separate video. So here we are. This is that. Uh, I also promised I would look at the player pack real quick because it is rather important um, when list building to kind of know the scenarios you're going to be going into. First of all, I just want to say, Goonhammer Squad, good job. This is a beautiful looking pack. Um, just looks very professional, very nice. You know, it's not some random, whatever, you know, whatever. Not the most important thing when you're running a tournament to have a pretty pack, but it, you know, Gave me a good impression off the bat. Um, I realized in my last video, I talked a little bit about being disappointed with like the low turnout. Um, part of that, I think, is definitely um, that Nova is in a couple weeks. And so a lot of people around here um, were you know, already super committed to going to Nova. And it's, you know, it's a little close together. We've, we've had a lot of events this summer. Um, I talked about going to ATC and a lot of people in my group locally here um, in Maryland also went to Summer Slaughter up in Pennsylvania, which is apparently a great GT. I did not go this year. Um, and this is one of the things I love about AOS. We are, compared to back in the day when I was in high school in college, um, we are absolutely just spoiled for choice on great AOS tournaments to go to. And it's fantastic. It is wonderful. Living, you know, I, I probably live in a particularly dense area being in the DC metro region. Um, but, you know, having two or three weekends a month where I could go to at least a one day three round tournament and maybe, you know, at least monthly a GT that might have 60 people at it um, is just, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> I love it. No complaints. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to, uh, you know, not spend all of my time playing Warhammer because other people in my life would like to see me. But um, anyway, it's great. Um, so, you know, no no flack to the Goonhammer team is what I'm trying to say for there only being 15 people at this tournament. Um, it's in a kind of packed schedule. And this is the first time they're doing an AOS tournament uh, here. So getting your, you know, getting the first time you do a tournament, getting it off the ground, um, it always, you know, you always have to build up a little momentum. Nobody, nobody starts a GT and has a hundred people show up their first time. Um, but yeah, I, I've been discussing with my friends, like ATC, we also had a very low turnout. Again, I'm going to make an AT video, ATC video at some point. Uh, there are other reasons for that, um, as well, but you know, we were talking about what, what do tournament organizers need to do to advertise, um, and get turn out for their events. Um, I'm not I'm not on Facebook anymore. I assume this was advertised on Facebook, but it's it's kind of mind blowing to me that like tournament organizers aren't a little more proactive about promoting events like this in like the discords, uh, you know, some of the big ones like AOS Coach Discord uh, is one that I'm in. Um, and it's I don't know, it's something our group has talked about hosting a tournament at some point, and it's, it's the kind of thing where if it's not being hosted at a store that like holds store or, or another venue that holds tournaments and has like a, an existing player base that like goes out to tournaments at that venue, something like this, where it's at, it's at the Baltimore convention center, it's hosted by a group that as far as I know, hasn't really hosted AOS tournaments in the area. You know, how do you get the word out for that? I don't know the answer. Um, be curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. That's the thing we do on YouTube, right? <laughs> um, just just rambling a little bit. Um, so anyway, let me zoom in here a little bit. Um, so it's a five game tournament. Uh, we've got Power Flex round one. Uh, this is the one I think with the A, B, um, the four objectives and it flips between A and B depending on whatever the person going second picks. So every Battle round, only the 2A or the 2B will be activated. Um, that's fine, I think, for me. OBR, you know, tends to like lower, more centrally located um, objectives. Uh, limited resources round two is a 
super interesting one. It's the it's the one where um, once you have held a once you have, once you have scored a objective an objective for two turns in a row, you can no longer score that objective for the rest of the game. So it's got six objectives to start, and you can definitely run into um, you know if you if you if you end up controlling too many objectives early, you can run into a scenario where you can't control anything later on. So it's it's just another it's a little wrinkle to think about. Um, lines of communication. This is the one where the person going second can disrupt um, mans. Um, I'm not too worried about this because OBR has so many command points, it almost doesn't matter. And uh, one little wrinkle in my list that I realized in reading over my rules in prep for this is that the Liege Cavalos, um, he doesn't get, you know, it's not like it's not like the heroic action where you get a command point that only that hero can use. It's that he can issue a command without a command point being spent. So the wording on lines of communication is when you spend a command point to issue a command, you have to roll a die and whatever it is on a five up, three up, uh, I don't know, whatever it is, I'll have to look. Um, you roll the die and you're successful. Um, you have to spend a second command point to issue that command. And if you choose not to, you lose that command point that's lost. So issuing a command without a command point being spent obviously avoids that. Great, cool. Um, round four, Fountains of Frost is the one where you have to be careful to not control your objectives in deployment with more than two units um, per thing. Um, maybe some tricky plays can be made there with you know just moving something to ping three units onto an objective and maybe do wounds to the enemy. We'll see. I've only played this once. Um, and then round five is Spring the Trap. That's the one where you can pull off D3 units at the start and bring them back on the board edge later. Um, so as you see, uh, these these absolute cowards did not did not put ice fields the the greatest scenario of all time into the pack. It's very disappointing. Um, shout out to my my boy Alex who wants to hold a tournament and that's just five rounds of ice fields. Um, I'd love that ice fields is great for OBR, um, but unfortunately this is not that tournament. Uh, so anyway, as promised, let's get into looking at the other lists. Um, as I said, there was only fifteen people. Um, so hopefully I can go through this pretty quickly. I'm I'm going to try and kind of blaze through this, just pull up every list, go through what's in it, give my initial thoughts on how strong it is in general and how I think I'll be able to play into it. Um, so hopefully there is some interest in just you know, seeing what people are playing and all that good stuff. Uh, so first up, we have, um, let's see, Andrew Martin with Beasts of Chaos. I don't think I've played Andrew before. Uh, he has Dark Walkers. I've actually never played Beasts. I know I know Dark Walkers is something with deep striking or pulling something back off the board so you can put it back in reserve and then bring it back again. Uh, I'll find out if I play him. <laughs> we'll see. Um, this is the yeah, this is the more standard of the two beasts list. So it's a beast lord, it's the Doom Bull, um, the Great Bray Shaman, and a Zangor Shaman. Um, the Doom Bull, uh, Bestial Cunning, I'm certain is the thing that lets you bring on one unit within seven instead of from a board edge outside of nine. Uh, sorry, not, not within seven, outside of seven. Very important distinction. Uh, he's got two units, 10 Ungors. So none of the Ungor Raiders that can shoot from off the board. So these guys are just shitty little screens, I assume. Uh, doing most of the work in this list is the nine Bulgors. So, you know, kind of the whole game plan. You can bring your nine Bulgors in outside of seven. They have plus two to charge when they come in. So you've got a re-rollable five inch charge. Go in and just blow something up. Um, they have charge, you know, they do mortals on the charge. There's nine of them. They have sixes, do mortals um, on the hit. Bunch of attacks, bunch of damage. Whatever. You're throwing bull guards at something. Um, you, of course, can also do the heroic action, which I've never, as I said, I've never played beasts. Uh, I had been assuming, I was assuming that the pull something towards the board edge is a um, spell, and it's not. It's one of their special heroic actions. So you can't really stop it. So you know, you can pull something out of position. Um, if you need to pull a screen away or just pull something towards the board edge to get it out of a bunker or you know the castle. Um, also has the burning head. 
Uh, we did just get an FAQ errata that changed Burning Head, and I believe we are using those in this tournament. So hope this person knows that Burning Head is different now. Looks worse um, from a first glance. Uh, but anyway, he's got the Herdstone, got to protect that. Six Dragon Ogors. I, I should probably look at their War Scroll. I assume they're fine. Um, Ten Bastigors, also fine. Um, this seems, it seems like not the, like I said, <laughs> I haven't played Beasts. I know a good Beast player. I've, I've seen, you know, I saw the lists people were taking to Worlds. Um, this is not the Worlds list with a bunch of Angor Raiders shooting from off the board. Uh, it does have the nine Bulgors, but just looking at this, my initial impression is the thing I'm worried about is the nine Bulgors. And I can probably... Oh, nine Bulgors. I feel like this has to be a typo. Are nine Bulgors 210 points? I don't know. I'll, I'll have to look. I'm not going to spend time doing it now. That seems weird and wrong. <laughs> for, for how scared I feel like I'm supposed to be the Bulgars. I, they can't be 210 points. That's nonsense. Um, at math. Yeah, I don't think that does help. Anyway, so perhaps, uh, you know, Perhaps their reinforcement points didn't get correctly put on here. Um, whatever, that's fine. Uh, like I said, big thing to worry about is the Bulgore, but I have the minus three to charge her on the Liege Cavalos, and I have the uh, Soul Release. So I'll probably be casting Soul Release on Archon so that nothing from Zerve can be set up within 12 of him. So I don't care if he can set up within seven instead of nine, outside of seven instead of outside of nine. If I have Soul Release up on Archon, over on like that half of the castle, probably. So I feel like I feel like here I'm basically trying to until you know, assuming he's gonna null drop and get before he gets stuff on the board, I'm just trying to keep the castle together, have soul release up, have the minus three to charge or uh, over on the other side of the castle, hopefully set things up so that those models, you know, so so something important can't be pulled out by the heroic action to the board edge. And I'm not I'm not horribly worried about this list. I think it's the summary as as the OBR. Um, very minimal casting. So once he has things on the board, I'll also be able to presumably do a bunch of damage with magic. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, moving on, Andrew Simmons. I have played Andrew before multiple times at multiple tournaments. Um, and in fact, one of my sh most shameful moments of a tournament, this is still eating me up inside. Andrew, I played you like a year and a half, two years ago at like probably my second tournament since I got back into Warhammer. And I was playing a cars I list and I played a rule wrong. I used Thunderbolt Volley on cars I to free him up from something that had pinned him. And you can't use Thunderbolt Volley on cars I. It's got to be a just a car and Angelos unit. So, so Andrew, from the depths of my heart, Sorry, big old asterisk on that win. Probably should have gone to you, but you know, I realized it like a year later. So, <laughs> not much to do now other than buy you buy you a beer if we run into each other. Uh, so anyway, onto Andrew's list. Uh, he's taking the Sons of Behemoth. Um, I do not know what their grand strat does. It's some gianty thing. Who knows? Whatever. They're giants. It's it's three giants and an incarnate. I gotta kill a bunch of giants. It, this is not a complicated game. You know, this is. 90 wounds of giants and a crown spine, which is annoying. Um, giants have really fallen out of the meta since I started. Um, I'm not, you know, it, whatever. It's giants. It's a lot of wounds to get through. They kind of a lot on the points, but I'm pretty sure with my buffs up, a Mortech unit can eat a giant a turn. I'm not, I'm not super worried about this. And it is an incarnate list. But it's not, you know, it, there's not an endless spell here that he's he's feeding to the incarnate to juice it up to level three right off the bat. Um, I do have one monster he could eat, but Archon's fast, and I can keep it away from the incarnate. Um, it's this is going to be a theme here. I'm probably overconfident. I'm not. I'm not super worried about this list. I, I think I can chew through a couple giants. The minus three. Again, the, the theme of this, I have the minus three charge R. He's got four things that he could possibly charge. With a little bit of screening and some good positioning, I feel like I'll be able to dictate 
the combats that are happening and you know stop you know all three giants at a time from getting into something and just eating my army um so that's kind of the game plan there we'll see uh bob carey is next although maybe dropped uh so that's unfortunate so moving on charlie mahoney uh with fire slayers i played against um a list fairly similar to this at atc and lost um i think I think this is maybe slightly worse than the list I played at ATC. So the list I played at ATC was like 60 um, Volkite Berserkers. This is, first of all, awful formatting. I do not like the format of this list because it's hard to go through. Um, this is 10 Volkite Berserkers, 20 Volkite Berserkers, and then two by 10 Earthguard Berserkers. So that is 10 less dwarf bodies on the table to start off. So 20 less wounds, which helps me because I think I feel like I got through about 90 wounds of dwarves before I ran out of gas in that game. Um, and he also does not have the Magma Droth, which a Ren for Magma Droth really ruined my day in that game. And so there's there's just a little bit less wounds here and one less really scary piece so there's it's it, i think it would be it it's still a lot of dwarf bodies to chew through um i do only have one unit of morgast turning off the strike first command uh, i kind of wish i had two because uh, that was pretty clutch the other times that i've played against the hearthguard berserkers um but again, I, I feel like this is just a little bit short on bodies. The, the two by 10, I know I, I, I played a practice game with a, a similar list that I think I talked about in the last video um, with two by 15 uh, Hearthguard Berserkers. And even with 15, I was able to, you know, basically chew through those before they hurt me. Um, in terms of the hero loadout here, it is Greyfeard, so the heroes all have plus one wound and they have extra artifacts and things. Um, I, you know, what, I'm not a huge fan of this list format, but it is nice that they called out um, what their stuff does in the list. I've I've started to see this trend um, a little bit, and I I think I like it. Uh, it is nice to just be able to pull up your opponent's list and have a little summary. So. I'm not going to complain hard about this format here, really. Um, anyway, it's got a Rune Master that when he's dead, he summons the Infern off, and his strat, Grand Strat, is have an invocation under your control on the battlefield. So, you know, this guy dies. It seems like that's, I guess, just a little bit of insurance. Um, you know, if he gets like popped around one or something before he gets to, you know, use his prayer to summon. Uh, Rune Smiter, Rune Sun, another Rune Sun, the Battlesmith. The Battlesmith is really the annoying thing in this army for me because the four up spell ignore is just very annoying <laughs> on the whole central bunker where like all of the heroes are going to be. It's just obnoxious. I'm so magic heavy in my list that. Um, you know, even the corn five up spell ignore gives me, I'll, I'll talk about this, gives me endless conniptions. And um, the four up, it's even better. Um, I am, I'm one one against this style of list. Um, and the list I'm playing at this weekend's tournament is the list that is closer to the one that I won against this style of list. Um, so it'll be a good game. Again, being optimistic, I'm hopeful. Ah, Chris Werder, why you got to do this to me? Playing Blades of Corn. This, I'll say right off the bat, I think this is the list that I personally am most worried about at the tournament. Um, for my list, I don't know that is, I don't know it's the strongest list against the field. Um, we'll see two Seraphon lists that are very scary. Um, Although being corn and having you know having that built-in um, magic 
resilience um, will also help against the Seraphon. I, I don't know enough about those two armies, or I haven't seen them clash enough to know if either of those are favored. But anyway, this list worries me, because again, like I said with the Fire Slayers, um, I am very magic heavy, and I do have a friend that plays Blades of Corn. Multiple friends, actually, play Blades of Corn, And there are games where just the five-up spell ignore, I... Yeah, there's just games where I do zero damage with magic, about 30 mortals to myself with magic, and give them, you know, eight blood tithe, and it's just painful. <laughs> um, because he does have the damn hex gorger skulls, which, if you don't know, they give, I think it's minus two to cast in an aura, and then if a wizard rolls a natural eight to cast, uh, blows up and just, just does a ton of mortals. So, I, yeah, I had a game recently where I, I did nothing to him with magic. I did 20 or 30 mortals to myself. Luckily, I'm OBR, and most of those were like bodyguarded onto a mortis guard and healed back up. And like that didn't end up being a deciding factor, but just my magic not having any impact was, was probably a, a deciding factor. Um, anyway, the list Scarbrand. Blood's a crater with the banner of blood. That's reroll charges within 16. It's great. Uh, the slaughter priest with high priest, so he can chant twice in a turn. Um, it's got bronze flesh, which is plus one to save. Killer instinct is make a normal move in the hero phase. Uh, second slaughter priest also has killer instinct. Uh, I think this is plus one ren. And then, of course, the Realm Gore Ritualist with Bloodbind and Blood Sacrifice. Um, I gotta remind myself, Bloodbind, I think, is the taunt, basically. Uh, the lure that they make you move one of your units eight inches closer to theirs. Um, that is that's something that caught me off guard the first time. It's not make a normal move towards them, it's move eight inches. So even if you have something that's like four move, that's... That unit's still going eight inches towards the corn guy. Yeah. Um, corn's great. It's a, it's a great book. It's it's strong, but not oppressive. It has all sorts of little movement tricks, like like pulling units out of position. Of course, the the blood tithe to move uh, corn units, which got nerfed slightly, and I think was a, a great tweak. Um, it's just a solid book. Uh, anyway, he's got 20 blood, blood warriors. Um, this is like the chaos warrior type guys in the book. Uh, two by ten blood reavers, which are more chaffy units. Uh, as I said, the skulls, the wrath axe, pretty standard invocation loadout. Uh, six skull crushers, <sighs> super tanky. They they have charge mortals, but their combat profile is very underwhelming. So even 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 with the rend prayer on them. They're they're an anvil. They they just don't do damage in my experience. Um, so it feels like I, I should say he also has Korgrath. I don't care about Korgrath. Korgrath turns off inspiring presence. OBR is immune to battle shock. Whatever doesn't matter against me. Just another thing to kill. Um, back to my previous thought. It feels like this list wants to be throwing bronzed flesh on something and. Bronze Flesh on something. Yes. Bronze Flesh on the Skull Crushers. Killer Instinct, the Skull Crushers up there eight inches in the hero phase. And just get them in and pin something turn one. Uh, and just hope they can't chew through 30 wounds at a one-up save quickly. Um, there's, there's plenty of things that cannot do that. Um, in my case, uh, I feel like... I feel like it's a little less effective against OBR just because we do have the retreat and charge command. So we do have a little more flexibility, even if we've been pinned with something. And you know, I'm just kind of hoping I'll get a drain vitality off for minus one save and Horfrost on more tech or something to go to rent three and be able to shoot through these. Um, thing I'm scared about, uh, Scarbrand is obviously very killy. Uh, but he doesn't fly. He's the only bloodthirster that doesn't fly. He's an eight-inch move. Um, you know, he does have three d six charge, so he could killer instinct Scarbrand turn one and just chuck Scarbrand in. But that's where screens come in. 
you know, hopefully I'm not bad enough to get <laughs> totally screwed turn one by a by a fast, angry Scarbrand. Um, I, I, I think I'm hoping here he doesn't roll all his five up spell ignores and I can chip Scarbrand down with magic. And then you know, he's not, he doesn't have strike first. The thing, the things in, things in blood, sorry, blood. There's so much blood, blood everywhere, blood and skulls. The things in blades of corn, there's the word I was looking for. Uh, that scares me and like my buddy's list is the strike first bloodthirster that chain activates the other bloodthirster and it just feels very hard to deal with with my list here at least scarbrand isn't striking first so i can throw in you know if i haven't if i haven't done a half wounds even even a unit like a cavallo's death rider unit can go in there and clean up scarbrand if he's if he's wounded um so i'm not terrified of scarbrand I assume this guy's going to be screening with these Blood Reavers and pulling me out of position and not make it that easy. Uh, it's very easy to think of, and this is a habit I have to get out of, it's very easy to think of the plays you can make. It's it's a step harder to think about how all of your opponent's possibilities for their actions are going to be interacting with your game, game plan. And that's way too much depth to go into right now. So let's go on to Seraphon with Christopher Gosselin here. This is this is dirty, dirty list. This is this is this is rough. I think I'm okay into this because of Null Myriad, but I I might call this the strongest list at the tournament. So this is the the full on Starborn Fangs of Sotek, Slan with the double summon points, uh, bonded to a Crown Spine, Starseer Croak, Astrolith Bearer, Random Ripperdactyl Chief with uh, the Arcane Tome. Just, I think having one more wizard is an automatic extra point for summoning and then he can cast something. Then we've got 10 Skinks. Um, makes me, well, makes me sad to play it, but it makes me so happy to see the two by five Soros guard. I feel like, and I haven't played into Seraphon really in the new book, but I feel like the people who play one by five Soros guard or even no Soros guard, are leaving the leaving the slan and croak a little bit potentially exposed. So I think I think the two by five source guard is a good choice. Um, only fit in two endless spells. I feel like you normally see three, but trade off is he gets a crown spine. So you know he's got rupture on the slan. He can set the crown spine wild and eat an endless spell and jack it up to level three right off the bat. And it's just going to be sad times. <laughs> so, you know, here I'm, he's probably going to position the slam so that I'm not in dispel range, depending on the scenario. Um, so <laughs> my goal here is to, really my goal here is to have Archon in dispel range of rupture. <laughs> and throw Primal Dice at it and just hope I stop the thing from going wild for a turn or two until I can deal with it and you know, knock it down to you know, hopefully zero, get it off the board. Um, I, I feel like there's a there's a 99% chance I'm going to play one of the two Seraphon lists this weekend, which is great because it's the whole reason I took Null Myriad. I have not played it out yet. Um, in my head, I know that I'm not going to be taking damage from magic, but as long as he's still getting spells off, he's still getting the summon points, and he's still probably bringing down a turn of wrapped it on chargers every turn. Imagine that being annoying. So I'm looking forward to getting the experience in for that uh, that matchup that I haven't had yet. Uh, Harry Isaacson, the man, the legend here with this list, six Rotbringer sorcerers, one of them bonded to an incarnate. He's got three spells, uh, endless spells, and then he's got 50 plague bearers. What, what a legend. Love it. Love it. Um, do I think it's good? No. Definitely not against me because I'm ignoring all the spells. Um, he's got Merciless Blizzard on every Rotbringer Sorcerer. I hope that he knows you can only cast the same spell uh, once per turn. I assume this is just a bunch of uh, I don't know I don't know what the game plan is here. Seems like uh, seems like three too many blizzards. Even if your plan is to just throw 
I don't know, slow, very slow sorcerers at people and cast Merciless Blizzard. I just, uh, I, I don't see the plan here. I, I'm i hoping to stop Rupture. I, you know, I know he's got the Covens. He can make something plus, th plus three to cast. Um, I have plus two to cast, you know, Dispel with Archon. Hopefully I'll be able to stop the Rupture and stop this Incarnate from going wild. Once again, same thing I talked about in the previous list. Um, but I don't know. I was looking at the Plague Bear scroll. They're really, they're not that tanky. Two wins a pop with a five up save and a five up board is like not impressive and they're not hitty. And I don't care about any of the damage spells. Got oh, Horfrost in here somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, there it is. So I don't know. I, I, I just fall Horfrost and Rupture and then don't care about the rest of his army. To some extent, you know, obviously these, you know, it's a bunch of Plague Bear bodies that are going to be standing on points. I think I can kill them. So there's my overconfident prediction for that. Uh, I think I've played Harry before. I think he beat me. Um, I was playing, I think I was playing Slaves to Darkness in his Seraphon, the old book, but could be remembering wrong. Uh, we have another beast list, uh, Jack Rush LaRue. Don't know him, but he's got the Doom Bull, Zangro Shaman, two more Bray Shamans. Um, again, I'm ignoring magic. So uh, turns out, Null Myriad's good for this uh, this tournament. Who knew? Uh, he's got two Gorgons and a Saigor, which are battle line because he's in Quake Fray. And then only six Bulgors. So, I don't know. I'm you know, even less scared of six Bulgors than I am of nine Bulgors. Uh, he's got this thing. It does something. I read it, and it didn't seem that tactful. And again, I just ignore it. Then he's got ten Zangors and six Zangor Enlightened. Um, being very manned, heavy, independent, um, the three monsters to roar me does give me pause. Um, they are not, however, that tanky. It's not like it's a Gargant with 35 wounds or a Stonehorn with, you know, a three up, five up. Um, so, you know, this is like 16 wounds at a four or five up save, I think. Um, so they're not sticking around that long. Uh, Gorgons can't heal. We'll see. Um, I think this is... I think this is worse than the other beast list. But again, I don't have experience playing against beasts. So we'll see. Um, James O'Brien, fantastic guy. Uh, great player. Playing a very, again, a very dirty Starborn list, um, but without the uh, Crown Spine. So he's got Double Star Seer, Star Master, Croak, Astrolith Bearer, a Star Priest, you know, pretty much just about the max casting summoning engine you can make it. Uh, he's starting out with two by five Raptid on Chargers, no Skinks here, five Source Guard. You know, I think five is enough. I, it, it really just worries me when I see people with no Source Guard, the Bodyguard. Uh, he's got the Bastilladon, you know, great just little monster with a two-up save base uh, that doesn't bracket anymore, and you know, three endless spells to be checking out. So he's this is just this is just the full summoning engine, and I already said this before. I I hear these Rapidona Chargers can do some damage, but I haven't faced them. Um, so I this is this is another contender for like probably top three list in my head at the tournament. Um, right, getting right onto it, we've got a pretty straightforward Knights of the Empty Throne list from Mike Vaginos, uh, double Sorcery Lord. Uh, I'm a little surprised, no demonic speed, but it is Knights of the Empty Throne. It can run and charge with two by six corn, Baron Guard, and 10 Nurgle Knights. So you've got the fast anvil that is just going to go in and pin something, and you've got two as hell Varengard units that are real fucking fast and are going to go in and just slay. Um, obviously, both of them, can, they can each fight twice once per game. And then two Corvus Cabal, great. They can drop in from reserve and contest points or screen if he needs it. Um, only thing I think is a little iffy here is Grand Strat is follow the path to glory. So he's depending on rolling... Um, turning into a demon prince on one of the characters. So 
that is what Chaotic Conduit is for. He's just going to be casting on himself and with Undivided, um, with the bonus for the Eye of the Gods roll. Um, I I feel like I'm I feel like I'm going to get this guy. You know, he might. There's always a chance he gets lucky and he pops. You know, probably the Demon Prince thing and just secures his Grand Strat turn one. Um, but I feel like I can get that guy, and it, I feel like this list is so focused. You know, obviously on the two Varen Guard and the Knights, which are all battle line, that I feel like Overshadow would have been good. If you know, if he's losing all of his Varen Guard and Knights, he's lost the game anyway, and he's got the speed to chase down, you know, other people's battle line if he needs to. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I would have gone slightly different, but I'm also bad, so who knows? <laughs> uh Nicholas Waters, Scooter, Scooter with the good old pigs. Um, Scooter plays this all the time. He's a great guy. He's good at the army. He's played it forever, and he knows it in and out like the back of his hand. Um, he's got War Chanter, Weird Knob Shaman, another War Chanter, the Mega Boss, two by six Gore Gruntas, ten Brutes, and then he has Gragrot, which I think is the only difference um, from when I played him. So, pigs. What can you say? It's a good list. It'll smash and bash. Um, I assume he took Scragrot for a little bit more magic, which I don't need to worry about. But yeah, it's a good list. On to Nick Jackson, personal friend and fantastic human being, great painter. Uh, he's been messing around with ogre lists. Um, he took Kragnos and Tyrants in Meat Fist for all of the charge impact mortals uh, to ATC. But here he's taking uh, the three Frost Swords on Stonehorn, two by two frost sabers for battle line with the ice brow hunter general and uh one more stone horn beast rider um it's it's good from talking to him he's been feeling um he's been feeling the pain of being a three drop because you can't put all of these behemoths in your battle um regiment um, so he's been feeling that a little bit, and I know he's been feeling the lack of bodies a little bit, but it's still a strong list. Um, it can still it can still bash some people. Um, in terms of into mine, um, you know, and I, I I didn't say this last time because I'm reiterating myself. Um, <laughs> I really think the minus three charge aura <laughs> is just just does t so much into a list like like this, um, and into the pigs as well. Uh, you know, just just making sure. You know, because my list can can handle one smashy thing getting into me. I can't handle a whole army of smashy things alphaing me at the same time. Um, so just limiting the amount of things that can get in with that minus three charge aura will be big. Uh, almost done here, because that's me. We talked about that. Soul Blight. Um, Soul Blight are obviously just strong as hell right now. They're the best army in the game right now. Um, this is not the optimal Soul Blight list. Um, two by ten Black Knights. A little weird. I don't think they do much. They're, you know, they're a little fast. They do charge mortals, but they're bad in combat. They do not have good stats. They are not hard to kill. Um, so a little weird there. I mean, I know you can bring back at half strength or whatever. Um, two by ten dire wolves. No zombies. A mortis engine. Okay. All right. Sure. Mortis engines do something. I. Whatever. <laughs> Thirty skeletons. Uh, that if you don't kill them all, half of them come back. And we've got Manfred, who I haven't seen since the new book came out, a White King, Skeletal Seed, which I love because White Kings are great, and a Vampire Lord. Um, so I think my summary here is it's a suboptimal list of a strong army. Maybe it'll take a couple games, but like nothing here. Nothing here worries me. You don't have the unrendable Zombie Dragon. You don't have Neferata. You don't have Zombies. You don't have Graveguard. I don't see. I don't see what in this list kills anything. Black Knight Mortals, I guess. Whatever. I, I'm not scared. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry, friend. Uh, Thomas. Yeah, sorry, Thomas. I'm not scared. Uh, here we have Tom Long. One more Nurgle list. Uh, this is all of the, um, whatever they're called, the big monster guys. So Bloab, Morbid X Twiceborn, Orgot Steven Spew, a Sorcerer with Hoarfrost. Um, Agreed on clean one, three beasts of Nurgle, three Nurglings, Geminids. Don't care about Geminids. Generally, 
well, he'll probably be buffing himself with magic, so you know, I don't ignore that. Um, it's interesting. I don't know what to think about this list. Um, this will this will be kind of a seat of the pants game for me. <laughs> I know Beast of Nurgle. He is is kind of a summoning list. I know he'll probably be summoning a sloppity bile piper, and then I won't be able to pile in, and he's going to be like tagging things with Beasts of Nurgle. Um, so it'll be a bit of a cagey game. I do like this list format. We should we should include funny pictures in our lists more often. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't have much intelligent to say about this. The the Bloab Orgots are moderately scary, but they're not, you know, not a, what's his face? Bloodthirster Man, first list, you know who I'm talking about. It's not corn scary. Um, I haven't played against Nurgle in a while. I don't know how strong they are in this book. Uh, so I don't know. I'm just going to like try and stand on points and not get killed by things because I don't think this list is that killy. I think it's more of just a, grind and stop damage coming back with like the summon sloppity and last but not least oh, travis roth friend of a friend friend of nick jackson's um brand new to aos so this is basically the models he has um this is not at all designed to be a strong list this is this is this man playing his second through sixth games of aos at this tournament and having a great time, I hope. Um, so yeah, not much to say. It's just what he had in Cities of Sigmar. Uh, Nick loaned him six protectors to have something that maybe functions on the battlefield decently. And I hope he has a great time. I hope I get to play him because I want to meet him. Well, I'll meet him anyway. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm like, oh, I hope I have an easy game. Uh, you know, we all dream of that, but don't want to be an asshole. Um, yeah. I know he's got a cool conversion for his Luminarch that I look forward to seeing. Um, but other than that, like I said, the Cities book is coming out soon. This is a last raw for his old Cities. <laughs> I bet all these handgunners as Fusiliers will be very good in the new book. Um, but, you know, four by 10 handgunners, two steam tanks, six protectors, some other random stuff, gyrocopter outriders, yeah, nothing in this list I don't think is going to really kill me. So I'm just going to walk up and kill it. I'm just going to throw some fast things at hand gunners and hopefully, hopefully win the game. <laughs> uh, that is it for that. So, so yeah, there's the lists. Um, I'm looking forward to playing this weekend, getting five games in at a venue only an hour from my house. Uh, that's always nice to be able to go home and sleep in your own bed and actually play in a tournament. Um, so, yeah. After this tournament is done, I'll do a recap video where I talk about how wrong I was about all of these predictions and all of my strategies. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll have a few wins to talk about, maybe maybe some losses where I, I learned some things. But uh, thank you again for listening. I, again, leave some comments if this is terrible, if this is great, if there's things you want me to talk about more, uh, I would love feedback. And uh, yeah, good games, make it easy. I'll see you next time.